Welcome to r slash choosing beggars, where a woman asks for a car as a wedding gift. Need a photographer for events, in exchange we give free publicity and lead creation. Please PM me. How about giving money? Can you sell it $100 cash? No, sorry. How about $80? Um, that's less money? So? So no. Then, how about $60? Hey, can I buy your textbook from last year? Did you sell it yet? Which one? Ken. Yeah, I'm selling it for $200. Oh, but isn't the bookstore selling that brand new edition one for like $167? But I'll add my notes all together for $250, but textbook alone is $200. So, you're selling last year's edition, the old textbook, alone for 200 bucks? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I think I'm just gonna get the new one from the store. You sure? Cause my notes will help you a lot, trust me. I'll add it for 250 total. Nah, sorry, I don't wanna pay an extra 100 just for notes. I kinda have my own style anyway, thanks though. It's not extra 100, it's just extra 50 cause I'm selling the textbook for 200. You're selling it for 200, but the bookstore is selling it for 167. So I might as well just buy it from there, or find someone selling it for cheaper than the purchase price. You're not gonna find someone selling less than 200, but good luck to you. Yeah, there is someone. The bookstore. Dude, are you not understanding what I'm saying? Yeah, man, the bookstore can sell it however they want. I'm selling it for 200 So you want it or not? I already said no. Okay, then you're lost. <laughs> so whatever book this Choosing Beggar was trying to sell, at least we know it wasn't a math book. Question, can you make a male babysitter pay child support? Hi, I'm a single mom going to college with my sister. A couple weeks ago, I asked my neighbor, a nice guy, if he could watch the kids for two hours while I went to class and my sister wasn't home, and he agreed. If he babysits and doesn't accept pay, can I sue him for child support because he took on a fatherly role? I'm sure I can convince the court that he accepted a fatherly role, which is how who owes child support is determined in my state. Follow up question, can I sue each of my child's teachers and make them pay me child support too? This is a review on a T-Mobile website for a tablet. One star, absolutely disappointed. I was disappointed when my boyfriend gave me this cheap tablet for Valentine's Day. First of all, I hate anything Android. Worst products come from Androids. Second of all, he basically got it for free and didn't put much effort into my gift. So now I'm upset. Lastly, I did make the effort to use it and it's so slow. I asked him for a mini iPad a while back ago. I clean and cook for him and this is what I get. I wanna cry. This post is so confusing, but most of all, I wanna know how did 46 people find this post helpful? Hey everyone. So we are all aware that my wedding is coming up in October. I've already sent out the invitations, meaning most of you have gotten them. Thanks for those who have RSVP'd already. If you haven't, then please RSVP by Sunday, otherwise we're not going to be able to have you. That being said, I would like to announce our gift registry to everyone. To all those coming to my wedding, these are a list of gifts that you can bring. You must choose from the list or consult me first. There are no exceptions. The list includes 1. Any KitchenMate appliance over $350. This does not mean regular kitchen items like an apron or a spatula. I'm talking about their stand mixer, blender, etc. Any Gucci or Louis Vuitton purses. Other purses are allowed, but please consult me first. Any clothes over $400 from Calvin Klein, Machino, or Nora's. New floor tiles for the entire house. I know this one is a bit of a stretch, but I'd gladly appreciate it. A new car, or a new trim for my car, or anything in relation to the car. $400 or more in gift cards from any of the following places. 
Fifth Saks Avenue, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, Calvin Klein, Gucci, Whole Foods, Sprouts, maybe even JCPenney. Other places are acceptable, but please talk to me first. Any Korean or Asian beauty products totaling $400 or more. Any high class paintings or decorations totaling $400 or more. A cash gift of $400 or more. So, as you can see, there are a lot of things on here. I am expecting everyone to spend at least $400 on the wedding gifts. I accept slightly lower amounts as long as you tell me first. Also, everything on here is first come, first serve. There's a link to the spreadsheet where you can find who's bringing what. Remember to apply early if you don't want to get me a Gucci purse or anything you don't want to get. Thanks, loves. XOXO. So, as a dude who doesn't know anything about the world of purses, I had to look those up. <laughs> and a Gucci purse goes for like $2,000 pretty easily. So, I think I would have gone with the anything related to a car option and gotten her one of those pine air fresheners. Honestly, I feel awful even saying this. My friend was letting me piggyback off her dad's Xfinity account so I could use Wi-Fi on the go and watch TV and stuff. And he died. So now I can't watch TV. Well, at least they feel bad saying it. I agreed to give it to you for 60 bucks. You said you can pick it up today. Is that not true anymore? Not after the passive aggressive message from yesterday. Lol, all right, my dude. If $10 is the difference between you making rent or not, maybe you shouldn't be shopping on Craigslist. Actually, it was a sob story, a common method for negotiation. You are literally making up lies to try and lowball, and I'm the butthole for telling you you're lowballing? LMAO. So this guy lied and guilt tripped OP to try and scam him out of 10 bucks. It doesn't matter if that's a common method for negotiation, it still makes you a douchebag. Okay, today I can do 50. I had to stop paying for my medicine to buy this. Oh, sorry, we can meet at blank. Yes, I can go right now with the 50. All right, I'll be there in about 10 minutes. Okay, I'm already here. That was pretty fast. I'll be there in about seven minutes. Okay, I'm waiting. Hello, I'm here. Hurry up. Hello? Sorry, I'm here. Are you by the parking lot entrance? Yes, I am. I only have 20, so I guess you're gonna have to take it. I'm leaving. I love the line, I guess you're gonna have to take it, as if there's no other option, like, see ya. I am invited to Heidi Klum's Halloween party this year, and I'm looking for a stylist and makeup artist who would like to get me ready for the event. Lots of press will be there. Red carpet, Getty images, TV from all over the world. I'd credit you in every publication possible. This is a great opportunity for someone who'd like to add this to their portfolio. It's not paid. If interested, please drop your website or handle below and I'll be in touch. Thanks. Hashtag Heidi Klum. Hashtag Halloween. Wow, hope someone can transform you into a paying client. Hey, I need a sitter for tonight. Saw your ad and I'm interested. Okay, this is kind of short notice, but I should be able to tonight. What age are your kids and what hours tonight? Any details would be appreciated. We have twin three and a half year olds and a two year old. Be aware, none of them are potty trained yet, but you're more than welcome to work on it. We'd like you to come over. I'm sorry, the message kind of cut off. I didn't get the last part. The potty training part is fine. I can work with it. Come over at six, but before seven at the latest. What are your rates? For three kids, I can do 15 bucks an hour. Do you know how long I'll be sitting? At least till midnight, probably later. In no way will we be paying 15. We've had several sitters in the past and never paid more than eight. I can do 60 for the. I'm sorry, I can't do that. 15 an hour minimum. I don't want to waste any more of your time, so that's it. 15 or nothing. Our kids are very well behaved and will be sleeping most of the time anyway. You'll barely have to do anything. I used to babysit for $10 a night. Be grateful. Barely have to do anything? They're not even potty trained, lol. Good luck. Maybe you can sucker some poor teenager to babysit. What she means to say is that she babysit for $10 when she was a teenager in 1980. 
This one happened some years ago and isn't a simple transaction, so buckle in if you enjoy a story. This is the story of how I learned the meaning of no good deed goes unpunished, courtesy of a choosing beggar. For those who don't know, real estate agents often earn about 3% of a sale price for each side of the sale. The whole commission might be 6%, which would mean the buyer agent and seller agent brokerage each get 3%, which is then split further in most cases, with part going to the brokerage, part going to the agent. The part going to the agent pays for the agent's advertising costs, professional fees, taxes, health insurance, and so on. However, commissions are always negotiable too, and people routinely ask for discounts and such. In certain cases, I've agreed to provide discounts. This is the story of the deepest discount I ever offered and the choosing beggar that came with it. I guess it started when I sold Mr. and Mrs. Elderly their new home. They had just sold the one they raised their family in and were ready to downsize to something more manageable now that their health was in decline. They were in their 70s after all. We found a cute little ranch home with a small yard and they were thrilled with it. Their son helped them with so much. He helped them look at houses, helped them with maintenance, mowed their lawn, and was just genuinely a good guy. Their $100,000 offer was accepted and they closed in the sale without a problem. Another client was very disappointed. His family looked at the house and wanted to buy it, but their credit wasn't quite ready to get a loan and it was at the very top of their budget anyway. Fast forward nine or 10 months, Mrs. Elderly calls me. We wanna sell this house, she says. Turns out her husband's mental health has been in decline and he's now addicted to the home shopping network. He spent $10,000 in the prior month on stuff they couldn't use. He was depressed and unhappy with their home because it didn't have a basement and his anxiety over the possibility of a tornado striking just kept growing. Not unreasonably, I suppose, as this house was in central Missouri where tornadoes are not exactly rare. But the problem is that house prices have not gone up enough to cover commission and closing costs while paying off their new mortgage. By my calculations, they'd have to bring around $7,000 to the table if they sold to a new buyer at market value. I felt bad for them though, and I knew my other client had finally gotten to where they could buy at the original house price. I would have to work for free to help both of them, something that would take around 20 to 60 more hours of my time, depending on whatever hiccups came along. The couple was thrilled when I informed them that I could help them make their sale happen if that same buyer purchased it. The buyer was thrilled when I informed him he could buy it, even though it was at their max price he could get a loan for. They got into contract. Mr. and Mrs. Elderly moved to their daughter's house about 25 miles away. I never knew they had a daughter. I'd met their son at least eight times, but daughter? Never even heard her mentioned before. Mrs. Elderly says, well, she really wanted us to come stay with her because she's a nurse and Mr. Elderly just isn't doing too well. The buyer's credit issues throw some obstacles in the way. Then Mr. Elderly gets even sicker and is put into a nursing home. He's delusional and I have to get a doctor's written opinion on whether he's mentally astute enough to sign the contract paperwork as we continue with the transaction. It's horrible there. The nursing home has calendars and patients room that are branded to a funeral home. People are calling out for help in the hallway and the place smells like pee every time I have to drive the 25 miles out to get their signature on something. Four or five separate occasions. I still haven't seen the daughter, but Mrs. Elderly has begun hinting at being dissatisfied. And when I probed it, it turns out her daughter's putting garbage ideas in her head that I'm somehow taking advantage of them. When I saw their son, I gently inquired about her. He told me he didn't get along with her, that he thought she wanted them to live with her because she was just trying to gain access to their retirement income. Two days before closing, I need to review their closing documents with them. Mr. Elderly has already signed his part, but Mrs. Elderly wants her daughter with her before she signs hers. I visit with her at her daughter's dining table and daughter is there along with an ambushing attorney. As I'm reviewing the documents, she's challenging every single dollar as if I control how much the title company charges or the tax amounts. She finally speaks up and says, My parents aren't getting any money at all here. How dare you take advantage of them like this? She wanted me to chip in to pay for part of the closing costs, which were coming in at a little over $1,000. The final straw for me was when she called me a scammer. 
I said, I will walk away right now and let this sale go. You're more than welcome to find another real estate agent who will work for free and give your parents $6,000 worth of services at no cost. I started to gather my things. The attorney, fortunately, was not stupid and intervened, telling her that she probably should let me complete the sale. I left and the closing happened a couple days later. Mr. Elderly died the morning of the closing and never knew that the house he didn't want was no longer a burden to him or his wife. That was r slash choosing beggars and don't forget to subscribe because I put out new reddit videos every single day.